I am Adil Kumar. Welcome to my series on calculus. In this video, we are going to understand two very important terms. One is stationary point, the other one is the saddle point. The question here is, find the number of stationary points on the curve of f of x equals to x to the power of n over e to the power of x, where n belongs to natural numbers. Discuss if there is a possibility of a saddle point on this particular function, right? So there are two parts to this. Let us see how to answer such a question. So we are given a function which is f of x is equal to x to the power of n over e to the power of x, where n belongs to a set of natural numbers. Right? Natural numbers means 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. To discuss stationary points and cell points, let us first find the derivative, right? So the derivative of this particular function will be, uh, you could use product rule or quotient rule. Either can work, right? So let's use quotient rule. So we have e to the power of 2x, derivative of this is n times x to the power of n minus 1 times e to the power of x minus, derivative of this is e to the power of x times x to the power of n. So we can take um, e to the power of x times x to the power of n minus 1 common. So we get n minus x in the brackets divided by e to the power of 2x. So that can be simplified. This term gets cancelled with this. And what we have here is x to the power of n minus 1 times n minus x over e to the power of x. Now, what is a stationary point? Well, stationary point is, let's write down. Is a point where the derivative of the function is equal to zero. That is kind of important, right? So a stationary point is a point where the derivative of the function is zero. Now, in this particular case, when is f dash x equals to zero? So f dash x equals zero implies numerator should be zero, right? So that means x to the power of n minus one times n minus x equals to zero and that means what? That means that we have two points. One is x equals to 0, and the other one is when x equals to n, right? So from here, we do conclude that we have uh, two uh, stationary points, right? So we can write down here clearly that find the number of stationary points for this curve. So therefore, number of stationary points is 2. Correct? So one will be at x equals to 0, the other one at x equals to n. So that part we have answered. Now let's look into this, which is discuss if there is a possibility of a saddle point on f of x. Now the thing is, what is a saddle point? Now, saddle point is basically a stationary point where we do not have local maximum or minimum, right? So that is what it is. So saddle point means we are looking for a stationary point where local maximum or local minimum does not exist, does not exist. Is that clear to you, right? So a stationary point where the derivative is zero, you could have maximum or minimum, or you may not have, right? So for example, if you have a curve 
which is kind of like this right so so a stationary point let's uh, consider like this if we have like this let us say we have a curve like this right so so this is this is the one which is the saddle point and these are the these maximum and minimum right so so when we are saying saddle point we're looking at this point which is the saddle point so we do not have local maximum or minimum at this point correct so you have to figure out uh, how do we find whether we have a saddle point or not well one way of course is to get into second derivative and the second method could be uh, we could analyze f dash x correct so we can analyze f dash x to figure this out is that clear to you so let's do it so what we can do here now is we know that we have uh, uh, basically two stationary points so let's analyze both these points the two stationary points are at x equals to 0 and n right so n is a natural number so that means uh, positive 1 2 3 4 and so on so we could take some test points here so on this side we could take a point which is minus 1 if n is 1 also we can take a point which is 0 0.5 and let's take a point here which is more than n right so so let us say we take a point which is n plus 1 right so which which becomes more than n and within these intervals let's try to analyze our function now that is the function right x to the i mean the derivative of the function so we'll try to analyze the derivative of this function within these intervals so these are the test points and these are the factors so the factors here are n minus x that is one factor right the other factor is x to the power of n minus 1 correct now if we are considering a point which is negative 1 in that case if I substitute negative 1 for x here this becomes positive right so n is a positive number right so this becomes positive but if I take a 0.5 value n is more than 1 so this is also positive but if I take x as n plus 1 this becomes negative clear on the other hand what we have here is is a value where n minus 1 now if I substitute minus 1 here or any negative number then x power will be uh, the x value is is a negative number so negative number and power it really depends whether n is even or odd right so in this case we have two scenarios so we have two scenarios here one is when n is even so let's write here when n is even and the other one is when n is odd because the natural number could be even or odd right so think like this so if I have n let's say even number like 5 5 minus 6 is a I'm, I mean even number like 6 6 minus 5 will be odd right so n minus 1 will be odd do you see that so if it is odd in that case here we'll have negative but for all positive powers it will be positive however if n is odd then this power becomes positive always right so it is even always right if n is 7 7 minus 1 is 6 for example so in that case it becomes always positive do you see that so these are the two scenarios So depending on value of n, we could have at 0 a local minimum or not, right? So if I am considering the case 
when n is even, right? If I am considering the case when n is even, in that case n minus 1 will be odd and I get a negative value. So this combination will give me negative and therefore at this time the rate of change will be negative. Here both are positive so it's going to be like this. right? In this case it changes from this is positive right and then here positive and negative will make it negative. So what you have here is for n is even we have a combination of local minimum and local maximum. Do you see that? So for this, we have local minimum and local maximum. Is that clear to you? Now let's consider what happens when n is odd. So if n is odd, we're looking at these two pluses, right? We are looking at these two. So then both will give us plus, right? Here also we have a plus. So, plus means the derivative will be positive. So, it is kind of increasing and increasing. Right? Here, we have plus and minus and therefore, it will be decreasing. So, in this particular case, we have a saddle point at x equals to 0. Do you see that? And we will have local maximum at x equals to n. It does make sense to you. So, answering to this question, possibility of a settled point on this function. So, there is a possibility if n is odd, correct? Then, we do have a settled point, right? So, let me write down the answer here. So, from here, we get our answer, which is saddle point at x equals to 0 if and only if n is odd number. Correct? So that is the conclusion. If n is even, then we will not have a saddle point. We will have a local minimum and a local maximum. Is that clear? So this is a very important function and this function can be asked in test paper in many different ways. And therefore, it is kind of very important to understand it. I hope you understand and appreciate it. Feel free to write your comment, share your views. And if you like and subscribe to my videos, that would be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.